You're listening to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. The secret to well-being is discovering the power that is your birthright, the power to create a happier, healthier life drawn from our own vast internal resources. Join Jules and her guests as they gently guide you to shift your perspective from the familiar negative to the divinely connected, a place that will not only positively impact your world, but possibly shift the planet. It's all right here on Law of Attraction Talk Radio. Well, welcome to Law of Attraction Talk Radio. I'm Jules from beautiful Southern California, and I'm so excited that you're with me today because we've got another great show. You know, this one is all about the law of distraction and the art of intention. I'm going to show you this a really, really magnificent book because once you pick it up and read it, it's going to just stay with you forever. It is so hilarious. It is so powerful. And it is written by Tamara Lee Doris, D-O-R-R-I-S, and her angel, Marty Finkelstein. This is one of the funniest books. And as I discovered reading through it, the funnier it gets, the more retention it has to stay with me. I laughed through this entire book. It is so insightful. So I had to uh, contact Tamara immediately and say, you got to come on my show because this is probably one of the best Law of Attraction books I have ever read. Anything that can take me out of the day-to-day circumstance and make me laugh, hmm, hey, it's a winner. So we have tonight... Tamara Lee Doris, who is actually a real estate person who has written all of these terrific best-selling books, but they have to do with real estate. And here we go, the first time she's actually written a book that was channeled through her angel called Morty. It's hilarious. I hope you get this. So without further ado... Let's bring on Tamara. It's here, it's hot, and it's a must read. It's the science behind the Law of Attraction magazine. Every issue brings you great articles and in-depth how-tos from all your favorite Law of Attraction experts authors, scientists, and medical professionals. Go to lawofattractionmagazine.net. That's lawofattractionmagazine.net. Well, welcome, Tamara, to Law of Attraction Talk Radio. I am so excited to talk to you. I am so excited to be here. I love listening to your show for like the last year, so it's an honor. Oh, my goodness. No, it's a real honor for um, me to have this incredible book, and I'm going to hold it up and I'm going to show everybody, because all the way through, it's not often that you get a book that you can laugh and enjoy and get tremendous insights on the law of attraction. So this is fabulous and I there's so many things that I want to talk about but first would you please tell everybody how this incredible angel came into your life because that's an unforgettable story (laughs) well can I preface it first before how I got to that point sure yes so I have been like my entire life in the real estate business it feels like forever Um, and so I've always been a very spiritual person well when I was also in real estate I decided I wanted to be a therapist I thought and so I was going to college and getting degrees and I became a hypnotherapist and you know really working in it um, in more of a transpersonal perspective very spiritual and I wrote my first book not my first book ever but I wrote um, probably maybe my 12th book was the law of attraction for real estate agents and and it's still available in ebook but it's out of print now 
And I was, I don't want to say ostracized, but it was not welcome in the real estate community. I actually had a broker tell me off and call me a heathen, if you can believe that. Um, so I really took it to heart. And so instead of, you know, crying about it, I got mad. And I thought, you know what? I know this works. I've, I've worked it in my own life. I've helped other people work it. I'm absolutely going to find out all the science I can, all the science behind this, and then I'm going to prove it. And I'm going to bring it back into the real estate industry, and they're going to love it. So I set out for about eight years to study neuroscience and quantum physics, pure science. And in the process of doing that, so I could prepare this new book, which, by the way, is a big hit in the real estate industry. Um, I had this bathtub experience, and basically, uh, I guess I guess the best way to explain it, Jules, is to say that someone was tapping on my shoulder and saying, "Okay, Miss Smarty Pants, you've got the science now. Time to get back to your roots. There's more to it than science, and you know it." And so it was just this ride from then on out. Out. It still and it still happens today. Wow. So so tell us about this angel. <laughs> that kind of popped into the bathroom and was <laughs> when I was shaving my legs. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, this is such a great story. So he, his name is Morty. Morty and Ficklestein. Did I say that right? Yes, yes, yeah. And, and so the vision I have, and, and I think it's in the book, is Ben Stiller's father. Right. You know, that's that's the kind of voice and and persona that he has to me. Yeah, Stella. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you can tell his personality all the way through it because it's absolutely hysterical, and the way that you keep on coming back to him is like, oh my goodness, but it's so insightful. And so how did you begin to believe that Morty was really an angel with this wisdom? Well, first of all, I would like to clarify what I think Morty is because, and I want to say that because I don't want myself to be like, oh, she, she has this, she does this, because as you know, we all have this power. Right. And a visual that I would like to give your viewers or listeners is the idea, if you want to think about, like, just say God or the universe, whatever you choose to believe, is up there. Mm -hmm. And we're here in our physical bodies having a physical experience. Somewhere in between there, if you could imagine a being, it could be a light being, it could be a, an angel, but this being has an umbilical cord to God, the quantum field, but also has one to us. And so I consider Morty um, as much an angel or as much my higher self as I do anything else. And, and you know, or another way to look at it, and you're a hypnotist, so you know this, um, is our subconscious mind. So there's something between us and everything we want, and it's right there, but we have to, we have to tap in and tune in to, to allow it to communicate with us. And I believe that that's what Morty does with me. So he came to you through your subconscious and he's matching your vibration with the humor. Yes, absolutely. What a, very well said. Thank you. Okay, so that's where we're getting the humor because you you do tend to write humor in all of your books, not just this one. Well, I have I have uh, two kind of chick lit book, books which are uh, Secrets of a Spiritual Guru and I didn't write those for the comedy aspect, but yeah, my humor comes through. I kind of write, wrote it for us to make fun of ourselves because we take ourselves so seriously. And I think that's kind of a big self-development um, faux pas that we make. Yes. But several of my books are serious. The one I have for real estate agents, in fact, called Mind Over Market, is very scientific and, and you know, uh, procedural. So so not all of them are funny, but definitely I'm in my prime when I'm, I'm being myself. Wow, yeah. Absolutely. So what, um, there was one aspect in there when you were taking a bath, you were like grabbing for the towel and Marty, Marty came back with a, a, a quip that I thought was hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> tell us, tell us that. Well, I, you know, I don't remember the exact verbiage that, that what has it came out, but it was something to the extent that, you know, I wasn't his type and he wasn't interested and he didn't do that, those kind of things. So, you know, just be vulnerable was the message I got from that. 
and that he's just he's not able to even focus on yeah. that kind of thing because he's living he's not in, even able to yeah, so don't worry about yes it. he's in another universe you know <laughs> so it's so too funny another another dimension yes another dimension so when did he start giving you the information that you were requesting as far as hey what's going on you know yeah yeah because he's so, very profound Thank you, and thank you, and, and I'm sure he says thank you as well. Um, a lot of it, to tell you the truth, Jules, came, I took a lot of baths that winter, because I, <laughs> when I took a bath, that's when I really I really tapped in, and my husband built me this big, beautiful bathtub, and so I, I do a lot of Morty communicating in that, um, but yoga, um, and it doesn't have to be, for me, it doesn't have to be in a studio, like I have a very busy life, as I'm sure you know everyone else does too. So I don't always make it to a yoga studio, but I certainly take time in my office, I have a yoga mat in my office, and I just do a few stretches and I lay down, and when I'm really peaceful, the brain waves are slowed down, um, then I can ask almost any question. And I get profound answers. That's how I know it comes from a, a, my higher self or a higher being because I. I couldn't figure it out on my own. So, you know, that's that's how you, you know that something is coming from outside of yourself or at a higher level of yourself. Right, right. So the secret is, though, is that you're able to trust that information coming to you. Was that difficult for you? Um, no, I don't think so. I think that I've been on, on the spiritual journey for so long, and I think that I know from what I understand about science that the answers just really resonated with me sometimes he has given me or it has given me guidance where I haven't liked it mm. but then I, you again you know that it must be true if it's something that you don't like then you couldn't have made it up right right yeah <laughs> well that's great talk about um uh he was trying to tell you um how to work the law of attraction what was the biggest surprise to you well, over time, my definition of the law of attraction, I'm, it's, it's refined itself, it's evolved. And so what I'm really getting crystal clear from him now <clears throat> is that here's our problem. We're here in our physical bodies, being physical beings, experiencing everything physical, and we consider the law of attraction is, I want this other physical thing outside of me to come be in my life. And what Morty has made really abundantly clear to me, especially the last few months, is that the problem and the challenge that people are having with the law of attraction is that's the wrong, uh, the wrong model. Instead, we need to understand whatever it is that we want outside of ourselves um, is, is to get a feeling. And that once we can, once we can assume that feeling internally, um, the external things come to us. And so in essence, we're, we're looking for things outside of ourselves. And just by doing that, just by virtue of doing that, we're claiming separateness and yeah. it's all oneness, right? right. And so we have, to, we, have to, we have to discover it in ourselves. It's not outside of us. Right. So in other words, we have a tendency, and matter of fact, the reason people start even being interested in the law of attraction is because of the materialistic aspect, which is... Not bad, because it's the teaser into the spiritual life in which you grasp the law of attraction. So, in fact, it's actually a necessary component to bring people in to understand how they are powerful and they can create. But the end story is, yes, they're going to get what they want, but they're spiritually going to be in tune with one and that when they surrender it doesn't matter anymore right i agree and and i think i think we have it backwards in that we try to make the materialistic spiritualistic when instead if we get the spiritualistic the materialistic is just a portion of it and comes to us and i double and dare I, you to say that again <laughs> you're absolutely right <laughs> that was a tongue twister but you did it good you're absolutely you. right you're absolutely right, right. so that's a, a something that needs to be heard. So what other wonderful things did you learn from Morty? He's, he's just a kick. He's fun. Um, 
I think on a daily basis, the biggest message that, that I have that I really try to share with others is that we have to, we can't create anything in our lives until we do it, we connect with our higher selves. We, this, sorry, my, my big puppy came in here to say hi. Um, we, we are constantly, and I'm guilty of this too, Jules. I mean, I think everyone is. It's a kind of virtue of being human. But we are constantly looking outside of ourselves to feel better um, inside of ourselves. And in fact, Morty gave me a quote just yesterday, which I'm gonna make a meme out of. And, it sa- and he said, one of the main flaws with you mortals is you're constantly blaming things outside of you for how you feel inside of you. And I thought, yeah, yeah, that's what we do. Isn't that the truth? And if you look uh, at current affairs that are oh, happening yeah. right now, you notice that people are blaming everybody else instead of looking at themselves. Let's blame the government. Let's blame uh, the schools. Let's blame that. But wait a minute. Hold on. It's not them. It's actually the person that is not taking responsibility for themselves. Well, and, and perfectly said, Jules, and, and that just presents the whole dualistic way of thinking. If, if I feel bad because of something you did to me or, you know, who's in office or whatever it is, if I feel bad because of that, that's saying you're outside of me. And that automatically denies the fact that we are one and that you are a reflection of my thoughts anyway. And so that is that is the problem with our whole world. I mean, that yes. is right there. You just nailed it. That is the problem is nothing is outside of us. Everything is a reflection of inside of us. And, and no one wants to take responsibility for that. And so that's why the law of attraction and what you do in your work and your magazine, you know, that's why this is all so important because we have to wake up and realize that nothing outside of us is affecting us. It's, it's our, our internal roadmap that is reflecting everything outward. And when people can get to that point, that's when they become so powerful. That's when everything turns completely around. That's the major component. And Morty was talking about that as far as mirroring. Yeah, the mirror theory. And, and, and it's, it's so true. And here's the irony of it is we think we want this, 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 this. But once we get what we're talking about here, all that stuff comes. And now it's not such a big deal. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll give you a great example. My daughter, who does stand up comedy down um, in, in Hollywood, um, she wanted to get in acting so bad. She wanted to, to nail a national commercial. It was just such a big deal to her. And she tried for a few years and she was so disappointed. And it was as soon as she quit. Um, and just said, you know, I'm done with this. I'm going to do stand-up comedy. I don't need acting. I don't need all that superficial stuff. She nails a national commercial. So it's like, what, you know, you when you open up and you say, you, you know, you realize that nothing is apart from you, it's like just mountains move. You know, just from the days of the Bible, right? right. You can move mountains with faith. You really can. And it cause, it's it's actually all about surrendering and letting mm. it go and knowing that the universe has got your back. Yeah. You're, yeah. You know. I, think that, I, th- I think that's why we get so scared, Jules. I think, I think that, I mean, I know now through Morty and, and, you know, my own studies, I know that there's so much more and I feel safe because of it. But if I didn't know that there was that umbilical cord connecting me, you know, to the universe, I'd be pretty scared too, because it's like, oh my gosh, we're here all alone and people are dying and and it's so scary and how am I gonna pay my bills? That's where we're at as a society. We're in this fear-centered, scarcity-focused mentality and and it makes everyone around us get nervous. You're right, you know, um, know, I'm 63 years old and when I was in junior high, people were predicting a market crash way back then. And every year after that, they were always predicting the <clears throat> currency. I mean, we were just going to be, and we, I was kind of raised in that fear. Yeah. But you know what? Intuitively, there's not going to be a crash. Everything's going to be fine. If it does, okay, fine. It already crashed once. We're going to be perfectly okay. It's really not going to affect us. And the thought that the government can affect our our daily lives right now is ridiculous to think. Where is the government in this room right now? No. Yeah. 
It's yeah. ridiculous. Why would I live with this fear? And you know, you know, and it's so funny because being in the real estate industry, it's oh, one yeah. of the most toxic industries that you can imagine, which is why I continue to put myself through this because I, I'm just, I, it's a broken industry and we still have these conglomerates, you know, incorporated multi-billion dollar um, franchises that are, you know, knock on doors, cold call people, be pushy. And I'm, you know, I'm a real estate professor as well. And I am just dead. I mean, it's my mission on this planet to help as many people as I can become enlightened. But it's also my mission on this planet to to help the real estate industry, the people in it, recognize that there's a different way. You know, you don't have to be pushy. You don't have to take advantage of people. And so I really try to bring ethics to that in what you were just saying. You know, there's not going to be a crash that you can't survive. It's, you know, it's it's a fear-based society. Yeah, and we can dispel it by influencing others. Hey, wait, let, let's stop and really rethink this. And the older I get, the more I look back and I think, oh, my goodness, it, it was a breeze. What are we worrying for? This is just right. all made up. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. So what is it? with real estate let's take this for example what happens when you don't go out there and make calls and get people and do people flow naturally to you because of the law of attraction what is it how does that yeah. work yeah yeah so so i mean i have a, like a process for agents and just like in the book which um you know the process in that book is the same i just apply it for agents in a different book um but you have to start with the mindset um and the faith because if i just tell an agent all you have to do is sit there and think about it it's you know that's not going to work that's not how law of attraction works as you know right. um but the first thing is getting is healing the scarcity mode, the 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 fear basedness. And you know what? Quite frankly, we have a million and a half real estate agents in this country, and not nearly as many as you would like to think embrace these kind of ideas. Um, that is by and far largely still about picking up the phone, pounding on doors. So so we have to shift the belief and the mindset, and help people understand that consumers are not just a number. You know, and this goes for anyone in sales. If any of your viewers or, or listeners are in sales, you know, it's not just a number. Have you ever met anyone who wants to be considered just a number? I mean, even inmates in prison don't want to be considered just a number. So it's it's a it's a, a flaw in the human condition that we think that sales is about, you know, numbers. It's not about that to me. So you actually, when you get out of that fear base, you're actually magnetizing people to come to yes. you? I believe so. I believe when we when we we have to raise our energy vibration because just like we said in the book, the mirror theory, you know, we attract what we are. And so whenever I have someone, you know, if I ever have a client, like say someone selling a home and they're very picky, I ha I don't blame them. That's saying they're outside of me. Instead I say, "Okay, where am I being really picky right now?" Mm -hmm. So we experience ourselves through other people. And the minute that we can start understanding that and embracing it, I think we're just all bound to become more and more enlightened and evolved. So yeah, it, it really starts with understanding uh, that everything around us is a reflection of our internal thinking and then start repairing it there. So most agents who are in the, the broken part of the industry, it takes a lot, of, a lot of time for them to accept this. So they read my book, Mind Over Market, and I, then they come to me and they're like, I want more, help me with this. And so, you know, and I do, I have a very small coaching company, but mostly I sell houses full time. Well, so do you also give them this fabulous book? You know, I haven't, I had someone ask me and I fully intend in my real estate following when this is, you know, when we have the recording of this, I fully intend because I, I want to promote you and have everyone reading the, the magazine and listening to your show. So I'm going to promote it within the real estate industry when our interview is done. Yeah. Oh, good. Because I just love this Morty. How lucky you are that you could bring him into your subconscious. And, and um, again, you, 
became aware of him through the action steps you took, which was meditating, which was yoga, which is really getting in tune with yourself. So is there anything else special you did to allow him to come in? Because I did read in the book where it's something that you always wanted to do, wasn't it? To bring yeah. in? Yes, yes. I used to I used to try. I used to try so hard just to get input and advice. I mean, I started reading, you know, like Napoleon Hill and, oh. and Abraham and Seth years ago. And it was just like, well, I guess I just don't have that, right? But it wasn't, again, it was that, that like I was telling you about my daughter, the turning away. It wasn't until I said, you know what, I'm going to approach this whole law of attraction thing through science. And it wasn't until I was reading you know, Dr. Fred Wolf and, and our friend, our mutual friend, Joe Dispenza, and, and I mean, Einstein and Tesla and, and just really in neuroscience and interviewing tons of people and doing all this uh, scientific research that I had turned away from needing it or wanting it. Okay. I let, I let that go. So like you said, it was the surrender. And it was when I was in the midst of all that heavy duty research where it was like, knock, knock, I'll talk. I'll come out and play now. So I think that's kind of how it happened. <laughs> wow. Yeah. This is so great. So um, you have a chapter in here, Imagining the Wine Divine and Checking on Your Order. <laughs> Let's talk about this. <laughs> okay. What, what do, do you, you want to talk about? I want to talk about that yeah. entire chapter because it's so good. Um, it's... Um, uh, about visualization and uh, the difference between that and imagining, which is incredibly important information. Yeah, you know, I believe, and I'm not a, a, a terribly religious person. Um, I'm, you know, I'm very spiritual, but I don't consider myself a religious person um, per se. But there's the one quote in the Bible that just always sticks in my head about the kingdom of heaven being within mm -hmm. and it's always it's always been you know inside my head and I've never really understood it or embraced it until Morty and now I realize that it was through our subconscious mind and our imagination that we can create whatever we want but I want to be clear not just because of our imagination and emotion that goes into it and our, but that connection that we have because it's like your imagination your ability to create a picture in your mind your emotion which is your you know your magnetism this creates an electromagnetic um, impression subconsciously which will set your neuroscience your reticular activator system searching for whatever it is you want in the physical plane but it more importantly than that Jules it opens the connection to that umbilical cord I'm talking about, and it stuff happens. Stuff happens out there, and it's the it's the quantum physics, the unified field, whatever you want to call it, God. And so that's where I think um, the kingdom of heaven is within revolves around. It's like you've got it inside you, but you've got to connect with it, and you've got to feel it, and you've got to put it out there so you can embrace it in your physical life. That is so good. That's powerful. You know, that's true. There's not one person on this planet that can't do this. And yeah, if you've got if you've got a brain. Exactly. You know what? There's not even an animal or a dog or a cat or a horse that doesn't do the same thing. They know it automatically. Look at all the dogs and cats who have found all these fabulous homes. I mean, there's trillions of them. They already know instinctively that we don't so it's time for us to come back well and you know it's really interesting I've done I've done some studying on um, on not just animal psychology but on the neuroscience of animals and interestingly let's just take dogs um, dogs don't have a prefrontal cortex so they don't have conscious thought so a dog never says gee I wonder why he's mad at me I wonder what I said Okay, a dog just is happy or sad based all on instinct and emotion. And so they have us so beat at <laughs> the, our ability to turn within and feel our own energy because that's all they know how to do. You know, we have been blessed with a prefrontal cortex that allows us to make judgments. These are the negatives, make judgments, um, fear, worry, all of this. But that same cursed thing 
has been a blessing because it allows us to use our imagination to forgive, to love, to appreciate. It's just what we choose to do with that prefrontal cortex that makes all the difference in our lives. Right. And we're not stuck with the same neuron pathways that we had when we were growing right. up. We change and we have the ability to build new neuron pathways. That's yes, our some... neural pathways are not set in stone. Absolutely. I, I do believe, I do want to say though, I do believe that a lot of, a lot of authors um, make it sound easier than it is because if you've had a neural pathway in your, in your cortex for, you know, your whole life and let's say you're 50 years old and then you say, oh great, I can rewire my brain and it's only going to take me five minutes while I sleep. You know, I think that with anything commercialized, people want fast results. And it takes time. It takes time to calm down your busy beta brain waves and meditate and, and feel in your heart what you want and see it in your imagination and really connect. But I promise everyone who's listening or seeing this, it absolutely works. Absolutely. And, you know, as you know, hypnosis can fast track that. That, yeah, it is hypnosis. Metacreation, it, it is a form of self-hypnosis. Or, you know, you, I know you do this in your beautiful Palm Springs office. I mean, yes, hypnosis it can, can multiply it. I mean, someone, for example, could go to you and have a, a hypnosis, hypnotherapy session and then take that away and then do it on their own and then go back when they need it. You know what I mean? It just, it's, it's sometimes I feel that coming from an outside source is very helpful. Exactly. So my favorite story on that is that I interviewed Martin Sheen from West oh, Wing. Oh, wow. So uh, a month later, an actress came into my office and we were talking, talking and I said, oh, yeah, I just interviewed him. He's fabulous. She says, oh, I would love to meet him. I said, well, let's put it in your session. So we did. And she visualized under, while well, she was in hypnosis, she visualized meeting him and talking to him about a movie. And do you know she called me a month later and that actually happened. That's how powerful the mind is. Without yeah. even working because she left the office and she forgot about it. She didn't think about it. She didn't obsess about it. She just did it. She just let it happen. Yeah, yeah. I, I have a story like that. One of a real estate agent, I won't say his name or even what state he's in because it's still in the works, but he had this desire to be a celebrity of some sort, but he didn't know what kind. And so I said, well, what about the TV show, The Next Millionaire or The ne Millionaire Agent or something like that? Oh, and yeah. he said, yes, I love that show. So there was no, nothing at all, no connection. He had, he knew no one, no connection at all. And just over time of these sessions, he, um, he literally is a finalist um, oh. for, I think out of five, there's five people, five finalists out of the blue they contacted him he didn't even apply for this so it's just this is it's amazing and crazy what the universe can do if we just let it yes 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 and i have another story that just happened to me last week somebody came to me with grief uh her mother just passed mm. and so we had her connect to her mother she didn't connect right in the session but she took home the instant download and she replayed it and replayed it. she had this contact with her mother wow. and it was life changing for her because she could actually feel that her mom was so happy and oh. so young and so vibrant totally changed her life so the power of suggestion that the person agrees with is exceptionally powerful I mean, it fast tracks everything. I agree. I agree. So much fun. I just love doing that. The, the surprises are always coming. So what does um, Morty say about hypnosis? What does Morty say about um, uh, what we should do about reprogramming our mind? You know, and that, it's so funny because I, I used to ask him that all the time. Um, it's kind of where I, the, one of the answers was that visualization that I gave you or the image I gave you of me being connected there to being connected there. And it's just a matter, it's, it's not a matter of, of trying so hard, it's a matter of recognizing our connection and, and being in touch with it. 
So we're always pushing and trying to get things done or, you know, it, whether it's hypnosis or whatever, we don't have to push, just let it happen to us. So at the end of the day, um, it's really about connecting what's in here. It's, it's just always about connecting with what's in here. And I think hypnosis, and I think Morty agrees that hypnosis is a fabulous way. Meditation is a fabulous way. Um, being of service, uh, walking meditations, gardening, whatever a person needs to do or wants to do where they can get in touch and in tune with their higher self. But ultimately, to create something new, um, you do have to use your imagination. You have to know what you want. I think a lot of us put, you know, the old saying, we put more um, attention and, and energy into planning a vacation than we do our lives. And I think that we're pretty guilty of that. You're absolutely right. <laughs> it it um, is definitely um, fun to plan a vacation, but it's as you can create your life just as easily, just like that. Well, and, and we do. We, we're creating it right now. It's like you, you can't say, well, I'll create my life later because guess what? Every thought, every emotion, every experience is, is laying the pathway for the next one. You are creating your life right now, whether you're doing it with intention or not. So my whole purpose of, you know, of us, of Morty and I writing that book was the law of distraction and art of intention because it's you, you're going to be creating your life anyway. Quit getting distracted so you can create your intentions because it's going to happen one way or another and you're going to be five years older one way or another. Where do you want to be in five years? Yeah, exactly. So would you say the intent for um, meditation and um, visualization is to rid yourself of the fear? To rid yourself no. of the lack? No, I think I think fear and lack and scarcity are a result of us looking at what's going on outside of us and responding to it. I think when we go within, it's just to remind us that there's no such thing as out there. And then we can we can awaken afresh and say, okay. This is just all a reflection of me, and I'm just going to go with the flow and have that faith and that confidence. So I don't think there's any such thing as getting rid of fear. I believe that fear is false. Ooh. Now that's a good title for a book right there. Fear okay, is well, you false. Write, you write this one. You write this one. I'm, <laughs> about, I'm, I'm on my 18th one right now. Oh, no, I, 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 don't, I don't write books. I just talk, and I get to interview people like you. So, and you do it very well. Oh, thank you. It's fun. I've learned a lot from all of the experts, and I learned a lot from this book. It's so easy to read, and I like it because you are actually having conversations with him. So you're in um, uh, italics, right? And he's in, uh, yeah, he's in straight text. Yeah. So you can go through this conversation and um, boy, it's really hilarious, but it's so powerful. It's yeah, so it, it, powerful. The reason the reason we did it like that was because sometimes italics can be more tricky to read. And so but I wanted I want I wanted it to I thought it was important to separate what what came to me and what I was asking and I thought that me asking what I was asking was a little less significant than the answer and so that's why I made I mean I wanted his what he said to be you know to stand out so you actually were talking to him in your mind subconsciously and then you decided that you're going to sit down at the computer and write out everything that he's so it's kind of like automatic writing would you say Maybe it's more like basically when it came to me, it, it, he kind of guided me. Honestly, you know, my daughter does, my daughter Nicole does a lot of, well, she's my assistant um, as well, but she does a lot of my editing. She does all my editing in my books. And she said, you know, and you got to remember that was like, I don't know, my 16th book or something. She said, Mom, this book is so different. It's just like, it just poured out of you and unlike all your other books where I have to do so many edits and grammar and everything's all messed up she goes this was just like it just must have came straight from Morty so maybe automatic writing is a possibility I didn't really you know I never thought of that I know that it just flowed out and I honestly some of the things I typed I honestly don't remember typing it and so I reread the book and I'm like wow that's great I need to I need to pay attention to this book <laughs> I've heard other people say that as well. Do you ever want to start channeling him verbally? Although I don't think you can say Stella like he could. 
No, I don't really have a desire to do that. I mean, I'm, people who do it, God bless them, but thats I don't really have a desire to do that. Now, if someone came to me or he came to me and said, we need to do this, I probably would, but at, at this point, I don't think that that's anything in my near future. I, I just love everything he said, and um, it is so much fun. You know, when people come to the law of attraction, it's usually because they're in desperation. And here, this book is so uplifting and so much fun. And it's the first time that you can actually have fun with this serious of a subject to lift you out of desperation. I mean, this is fabulous. Thank you. You know, and it, I, I'm glad you pointed out the humor aspect. And I just want to say that I believe, as we know from research, um, that humor is really, really good medicine. And I also believe that the universe, God, has an incredible sense of humor. And when we laugh, um, we release endorphins, as you know. Yeah. And, and that's just, it's not, it's healing to our physical bodies, but it's also, it raises our vibration. And so that's, that's kind of the reason, the method behind my madness of writing um, the comedy books that I have is just because that's how I interpret life. It's just like, let's just laugh more, you know? The world would be so much better if it laughed more and meditated more. Exactly, and you know, just laughing as you're reading, it clicks in more. The information yeah. is like, it, it stays with you. Yeah, and, and I think so too. It's it's very powerful, very powerful, and that's why I just love this book, The Law of Distraction and the Art of Intention. I'm showing the picture again. It's just a must-have book. I love, 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 love this book. I can't tell people how much I love this book. I simply urge everyone to go out, have a great laugh, and learn because it's going to stick with you. It's just powerful. You did a fabulous job. Well, thank you. Along with I, Marty. You know, I want to tell you too that I don't know, I didn't I didn't send this to you and I'm sorry for that, but if, if people get this on Amazon, um, there's also a workbook that goes with it and it's it's got um it, yeah, again, it was Marty derived and so each each chapter of the workbook um, Again, it, it allows you to address your your inner kind of condition um, with humor. So some of the things I, I wrote in that from Morty, it's like, uh, I don't want to put this. I, and one, one I'll give you is, I think one it says that uh, something about what's hidden in your hid subconscious mind, Morty says it's worse than a, than a blind man in a room full of uh, uh, porno magazines. And I'm like, I'm not going to put that. In there. That's just so bad. <laughs> But yeah, you know, so that so the workbook has some additional verbiage from from Morty, but it's also it's also a deep opportunity for a person to kind of start doing some help self healing, and and you know, and then maybe they need to follow that up with hypnosis and things of that nature. But it's a, an opportunity for people to get really deep into their own healing. So I recommend the workbook as well. That's good to know. Yeah, you didn't send me that, but yeah, everybody needs to get that workbook. I love that analogy because it's so law of attraction. It's like, yeah, a blind man with sitting around all these porno books. I yeah. mean, isn't that the average person who comes first into the law of attraction is going, I want, I want, I want, but I can't get, I can't see, I can't yeah. Yeah. And It's like all of a sudden the blinders come off and you can see all of these porn magazines. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Give it to Marty. Yeah. Uh, it opens up the universe. Good, yeah. yeah. Opens up the universe into things you never saw before. <laughs> yeah. It's very exciting. Oh, Tamara, this is great. This is so wonderful. And they can go to Amazon and get the love of distraction and the art of intention, but they can also go to your website? No, actually just go, the Amazon is the best place. I'm really not, I'm really not. I, I was doing it for a while, but I'm not really selling them for my website anymore. But they can see you on YouTube. Yeah, I have YouTube now. People might see a lot of real estate stuff and get bored with it. But you know where I love to interact with people is on Facebook. Just Tamara Doris, uh, D-O-R-R-I-S, on Facebook. I love to interact with people on Facebook. I'm, I'm on there quite often. Oh, good. Yeah, I am too. I'll have to make you a friend. That would be great. 
we can keep on talking about the law of attraction. Yeah, absolutely. So Marty, Morty still comes back to you. Oh, I, I, Morty is just part of me now. Yeah, it's, really? it's not. I don't have to. You know, I, I'm not going to say I don't have to put effort into asking a question. The only, and this goes for everybody. The only effort required is to tune in, tap out. You know, just really find it in yourself. It's just a matter of relaxing. Everyone, you know, we try to to find answers and intuition by looking and instead we have to look inside and so it's just I think the biggest thing is slowing your brain waves down and and relaxing your body and, and your brain and going inside and you'll get so many answers it takes time I mean you know it might not happen tomorrow but within a short period of time if you do this on a daily this daily practice that Morty talks about meta creation um, I mean I've had people call me and say oh my gosh I've only been doing this a week and guess what happened so you start tapping in really fast, I think. And you can ask anything. You can ask work. You can ask relationships. You can ask material goodies. You can ask for anything to get the answers that you need to move forward in your life. It's and and I'll tell you, one the answer for anything material that I want, whether it's um, I'd like to have a couple more clients, I need a new car, whatever it is, I'm just always hoping that I'll get some different answer, and it's always the same. Then act and feel as if you already have it and take action toward getting it it's like there's i've tried it a hundred times there's no other answer so I, I know that one to be true for sure because i've heard it so many times and take action you have to take the steps to bring it into your life you just can't sit there and wish and hope yeah. although there are some instances but it's better and faster if you take the steps yeah, and well, and it's, you know, we're here on this planet, Jules, to to experience ourselves and to experience God and, and experience other people. And part of that is growing. And, you know, it's the whole contrast thing. If we don't fall on our butt sometime and, and understand that feeling, then we're not going to understand the feeling of ecstasy when we get to the top of the mountain. So it's uh, life is all about contrast, and I think that some people think that once you get to that I know law of attraction that you're going to be living in nirvana, and it's not like that. That's not the purpose of life. Yes, you're right. You're absolutely correct. Although I will tend to say that life does get easier in that oh. you can flip the switch at a faster speed, so you're not stuck in that indecisiveness or fear or anything for a very long period of time you can switch it on and off almost you know within seconds so that's a really good I thing. love that you said that because the an analogy that I that recently came to me um, through Morty was a light switch and I love that you use the word switch and but the description for me was that imagine you're in a room that's completely dark and black and he said, that's how most of you are living, fumbling around. And then you can just turn on the switch and now you can see your way around the room. Well, the analogy was meant to represent the answer is always our focus. Are we focusing outside of us or are we focusing inside of us? So whenever there's a problem, a challenge, you're upset, whatever, turn that switch, calm down, relax, close your eyes, feel inside you. And then all of a sudden you're gonna see everything. So that's kind of a, a good analogy for that. I love that. I love that. You know, I, I want to thank Morty for making life so much more interesting and so much more fun and um, just making life so much more worthwhile. So this book is outstanding. Outstanding. You did thank a you so fabulous much. job. Please thank Morty for us. We, indeed write another book too okay keep them coming keep them okay. coming <laughs> I love it thank you so much Tamara Lee Doris I just love the show thank you Jules it was an honor to be here thank you thank you so much for joining us we'll be back next week with another great show from Law of Attraction Talk Radio if you'd like to comment on tonight's show, send an email to jules at loaradionetwork.com and have a great week.